Have you ever wondered why people have .eth in their social media handles? Did you know that you can send ETH directly to them with that address? This has been made possible with the Ethereum Name Service, or ENS. There has been now over 1 million ETH names registered. Let's find out why so many people are getting their own .eth names today. I'm Jack, and on ETH the Blocks, we help Web2 developers transition into Web3. Before the domain name system, we had to visit websites using their unique IP addresses. Now DNS allows us to convert these IP addresses to simple names like YouTube.com. Ethereum addresses are even harder than IPs. Long hex addresses are virtually impossible to remember, so the Ethereum name service was created. ENS's job is to map human-readable names like Alice.eth to machine-readable identifiers such as addresses for wallets, smart contracts, IPF hashes, and more. ENS is built on multiple smart contracts. We can see the main contract on Etherscan with all of its functions. There are two principal components, the registry and the resolver. The registry is a single smart contract that maintains hashes of all the domains and subdomains, and information about them like their owner and their resolver. The resolvers are smart contracts that translate names into addresses. Each record type, like wallets and file hashes, implement their own resolver contract. Resolving an ENS name is a two-step process where you first ask the registry for the correct resolver contract, and then ask the resolver to return the correct address. Domain names must be 3 plus characters long, and there are different pricing tiers for 3, 4, and 5 plus character names. ENS also supports subdomains that you have full control of. You can transfer subdomains to others and even create your own registrar for your domain. To register your own .eth name, go to the dApps main page and connect your MetaMask account. As you can see in the top left, I have connected to the service running on the Robson testnet. Search for the name you want and see if it is available. Looks like jack.eth is available, so I will register. We can choose the number of years we would like to register for. You can always renew later, but you'll have to pay gas fees again. The dApp will make you wait while it confirms no one else is trying to take the name. When complete, you will have to sign the last transaction and pay the ETH for your domain name. After this is complete, you have your name. To set the name as your own default address, click here and then choose your domain. You will need to pay a small gas fee. Once the transaction is done, you can see that your address will now resolve to your ETH name. You can create decentralized websites with the Interplanetary File System, aka IPFS. The site files are stored there where you can then access them from your ENS name. The best way to check out .eth websites is to use the Brave browser where the functionality is built in. We can see here that I am going to Vitalik's decentralized webpage, vitalik.eth. When I get to the site, I can see that the address has been automatically resolved to the IPFS address. To check out some other decentralized sites, I suggest using esteroids.eth, which is a decentralized search engine. So there's your quick intro into the Ethereum name service. I mentioned IPS throughout the video, and if you want to learn more about it, then check this video out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.